what the whole album's about and, and sort of where, where the inspiration came from. Thank you. Mm. Um, I've got quite a, uh, fun enough, uh, this first question really, really made me laugh my head off because uh, Keith Finan wants to know, what's it like being uh, knowing Julian Hall for 40 years? <laughs> 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 well, uh, I suppose, you know, it's the opposite of changes. There's some things never change. <laughs> yeah, I'm still there. I keep arriving every now, every now and again. I pop up, don't I? <laughs> no, his, his real question was, um, what would you have done if you weren't a musician? Well, uh, hard to say, but uh, I always used to say, because I, I used to really enjoy geography as a subject. Okay and geology as part of that and I was fascinated still I'm fascinated by landscapes and rocks and you know um going somewhere and I mean there's a lot of places up here in Scotland for example where you go somewhere and you you see where the land's been twisted up and you learn that this used to be ocean or this used to be a mountain and mm. you know or, or this rock is like uh goes back you know millions of years and uh so I like to think that I might have been a geologist okay. um, uh, because that was one thing that might have interested me. I mean, the other thing, possibly painting, because I used to, mm. music and art were both a big thing when I was young. You know, when I went into the sitting room, which, as I said, was kind of our music room, you know, I used to do a lot of drawing in particular. I'd put on a record and, and just draw free freehand to it, just compose stuff. And uh, the music kind of took over. But that was always something that I was interested in doing. And I suppose now photography is kind of my visual art um, way of expressing myself, you know, mm. often see me behind a camera. Yeah, funny enough, you you were filming when you filmed Pete playing Gary's drums in Sheffield in 91, weren't you, with a great big, one of them great big camp. Well, it, uh, yeah, I mean, it was actually even more astonishing. I actually filmed us rocking up outside the, the yes, you did, didn't city you? hall at Sheffield. And, and I, and I realised when I look back at the footage, you know, that I, I saw Pete actually going yes. and, you know, kind of saying hi and wanting it in his autograph yes. and stuff. Yeah. I, I kind of remembered that I had filmed the sound check. I mean, Pete, when he joined the band, he was talking about that and saying that he remembered with my with my camera. And then when I look, I found all of this footage. So uh, fantastic, fantastic! And isn't now that is fate, isn't it? That is amazing. Yeah. That story, absolutely. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, Norman Bright uh, just wanted to know: um, Did you enjoy uh, doing the War of the Worlds with Gary Barlow uh, during lockdown? It was really good. It was lovely. I mean, on several levels. It was great that, you know, that he phoned up and that we connected because this was like, you know, about two months into the first lockdown. And, you know, I think like everyone, we were kind of like, what what on earth is this? And mm. what a strange situation. And then not, you know, suddenly having the rug pulled out under our feet, you know, we could both relate to the fact that, you know, we both should have been doing gigs or planning gigs or whatever. Mm. And uh, so it was really nice to hook up with him. And it was really nice to do the song. Uh, you know, it's, it's a lovely song to, to do. And I, I had to work quite hard to get the sort of fiddly synth bits in and, and figure out how to do it. But uh, I really enjoyed the challenge of it. Excellent. I think, um, let me see, I've got, uh, oh, um, yeah, both Peter Phelps and Simonatus uh, Sias said, if you could do a cover version, who, who, um, who would it be of if you could do a cover version? It, it would be most likely a Stevie thing because, you know, he's uh, probably okay. my biggest hero and one of my biggest influences. So if someone said do a cover version, it would be a Stevie song. Brilliant. OK. Uh, Graham Gudgeon said that your acoustic version of um, something about you got him through a bad um, period in his life. And he and both Josh Dean just wanted to know if you're going to be either doing any more solo releases or any more acoustic um, uh, songs. That's that's a really lovely thing to hear. Yeah, you know, thank you. Um, that's amazing. Um, I am planning to do once changes two is done, which you know is now going to take a bit longer to do because of COVID and all of that. Ah. But once that's done. Um, then I'm planning to do uh, another piano album, 
but I also have a project in my mind of doing a, like you know a, a acoustic versions, like mic'd mic versions of level songs, uh, of which I would include something about you in that. Okay. Um, and I, in fact, I started working on some demos for that as an idea a few years ago with Kipper, um, who I did the on the one EP. He produced the on the one EP with me, but it never got further than that, unfortunately. So it's still it's still an idea, but I mean, what I want to do after changes is to do an instrumental piano album because I've got some really good ideas that I've been knocking at the door for a, a while now and saying we need to get out and uh, so uh, and then maybe an acoustic you know song album of some kind maybe going into more of my kind of folk influences mm. that's a possibility. Mm. Uh, but I've got to get this first thing. I've got to get changes too done, and right. uh, you know, it's it's quite it's quite challenging to focus at this time. So I need to really mm. be able to do that. Sounds like it might as well come out on blue vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> um, funny enough, I do want to actually just give a shout out to my youngest son Louis because on the one is his favourite song of of yours. Oh, um, that's great! He, he really, really, really likes it. Um, and um, I have to say again, as I said to you uh, at the beginning of all this, I I like particularly sort of upbeat and dancey type songs. I that one for me gives you a feel good feeling. Hmm. Definitely, definitely. And also, I love your jacket in the video. Oh yeah, thanks. Yeah, I'll swap that it for a... I'll swap it for a Havering Funk Force T-shirt if you like. <laughs> <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> um, Johnny in the USA just says, "Is there any plans for Level Forty Two to come back to the States? Any idea?" God, yeah, you know, uh, it's been asked many times by uh, mm. fans in the US, and I'm afraid it's yeah, you know, it's something that we'd love to do, mm. uh, but it's it's quite a difficult thing to do logistically and financially because to actually come to the States, we've got to be able to, you know, bring the production or at least some of it over, uh, at least, you know, bring some of our instruments over. And uh, it, it's just, I mean, I don't know the ins and outs of it because I don't deal with the money, but I just yeah, yeah. know that it, it's, it's, it's really difficult to do that. And, and, you know, at, not come away with a loss, which is what we did with the 30th anniversary tour there. Really? Right, you know, okay. Even though we had really good audiences and most places were, were full, mm. you know, it was still, it was still done at a loss. So, right. uh, so you know, there needs to be some kind of extra vehicle to help it. And, uh, there was talk by one of the promoters in the States of putting us on a package where, you know, we do like a double header or a triple header with, you know, somebody like Tower of Power or oh, Average yeah, White brilliant. Band and so on. Oh, fantastic. And that yeah. was that was spoken about after the 30th anniversary tour. And, mm. I, I, and it never came to be, but, you know, some, you know, some of the pros saying, well, have you got a new album out to go with it? But mm. now we don't have a record company. So, uh, you know, because they were saying that because, you know, then the record company maybe could give some money towards it, but we don't have a record contract. Mm. So the, the, the short answer is we would love to. Um, and it just has to, we just have to get promoters who are willing to take the chance to to book us into places, even though mm. we've not played there for a long time. Yeah. Um, you know, I would love to go and play in America again. You know, it's, it's always a pleasure. Uh, my next question is from Mandy Hodgkinson, who I'm sure you know. <laughs> um, she just said, uh, when you released Love Meeting Love, did you ever imagine you'd still be playing to um, such a, a loyal fan base as you do when you do these tours again every two years? No, I mean, you know, none of that was predictable. Nothing yeah. was predictable in, in 1980. You know, just the fact that we had a effectively a five-year contract with Polydor to make five albums. You know, five years was just an unimaginable time in the future. I mean, yeah. if you can picture yourself as a 21-year-old, it was just like, <gasps> what? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, no idea, no idea that we'd, we'd still have, you know, all these kind of loyal fans and followers after so much time and, mm. uh, you know, very grateful for it. Uh, Nick Ward just says, um, like changes, are there any commemorative albums to be released? Um, 
commemorative albums. I wonder what he means exactly. Well, again, I don't know. Let's say, like, um, obviously, Running in the Family had its 30 odd years tour. Um, oh, is, there, is there like another uh, an album that would be remastered or, or have tracks that we didn't, that weren't on the first album, perhaps? added to it I, I don't know is that more of a mark question than yourself or maybe i mean i'm i'm thinking i mean i'm in terms of changes uh i am looking to because i've got um you know i mean the story of the song changes itself is is you know is quite an interesting gestation i mean if you're interested in this in how the music came together and i'm thinking to maybe put some of that material together in some form you know and and sort of demos and you know, a tr few tracks that I was writing at the time that didn't make the album that, mm. you know, might come out in another way. So uh, definitely thinking about that. As far as level 42 is concerned, um, I don't know. And uh, of course, it's it's kind of everything's taken a bit of a shift because, of course, 2020 was supposed to be our big 40th anniversary. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and, and we normally tour every two years. So now the 40th anniversary tour is going to happen in the 41st year as it were this mm. autumn um so what does that mean for the next tour and what does that mean <laughs> as far as releases are concerned so everything's kind of a bit up in the air because yeah, of yeah, COVID. yeah yeah okay um david saxby said who would you choose to replace you in the band <laughs> thanks <Dave. laughs> a great question uh Okay, well, uh, I'd, um, yeah, uh, if I had to choose someone, it would have to be someone who is no longer with us. Uh, so I would choose George Duke. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love it. Love it. I love this stuff. Yeah, excellent stuff. And on the same vein, uh, Ewan says, is there, if there was a film about Level 42, who would you want to play your part? Well, apparently, um, uh, yes, it would have to be, yeah, if, I don't know, um, depends whether they needed to look like me or whether they needed to sound like me or whether they needed yeah. to play like me. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't think there's one person that, that right. would do that. So you'd have to get a, a, a lookalike with someone else doing the, Keyboards. The singing and, and the and the keyboard yeah, or yeah. or vice versa so i mean the person that comes to mind because i always used to get compared to him was uh, jeremy guscott but um <laughs> but you know again if you're talking a young me i don't know um okay and uh, joseph isley said how young were you when you discovered you could sing falsetto well uh I don't know if I really discovered it. I think it was just something that I could do. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, you know, uh, well, not obviously, I used to sing in school choir productions, you know, primary school and middle school. And then of course my voice broke at some point during middle school. I can't really remember much about that, but uh, it's, you know, singing for set is something I've always been able to do. And uh, it just so happened that when level started, um, there were uh, quite a few instances where it was suggested that I sing the octave up, um, you know, kind of being, I suppose, influenced sort of in a way by, you know, hearing all the kind of soul stuff and earth, wind and fire and, and so mm. on. And also often Phil would compose melodies in that register in a kind of falsetto register. And, you know, if you compose part of the melody of a song and I was singing it, then I'd be singing it as he sang it to me. So it just came naturally. Mm. Um, so it, it really wasn't a discovery. It was just something that I could do. And uh, But I mean, you know, it was kind of fairly dodgy in the first instance, <laughs> but just loads of gigs and loads of recordings just kind of got better at it with practice. And he also wanted to know if you still got your original vo vocoder used in MicroKid? No, I sold it. Uh. Um, I, I sold it because uh, it... You know, I wasn't using it and uh, it was kind of just sitting there gathering dust. And I thought, well, what's the point of that? Mm. And I knew that there were, um, you know, different newer versions. And I thought, I'm just keeping this old one bit of nostalgia. But actually, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a great one. It's a Roland one. I mean, it has a particularly unique sound. But 
because it was so old it was actually all also a bit scratchy and noisy and mm. uh um you know they had a hum which i had managed to get rid of and i thought <laughs> you know i just having a clear up one day and thinking okay stuff that i haven't used for years and i'm not likely to use the last time i used my vocoder that roland one was on the um the metropolis gig. oh right yeah 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 and uh yeah but now it's now it's gone to somebody else so i don't have it anymore Sorry. Uh, Ronald in Germany wants you to put any songs from Changes just playing the piano on YouTube. Does he now? Yes. Okay. Well, I will consider that Ronald in Germany. And, Excellent. Uh, oh, well, that's yeah, not bad. I, that's not bad to send a request in like that, is it? And yeah. It be, why not? Be answered. Why uh, not? Paul Nyman and Brian Eckers wanted to know what's kept you creative during lockdown. Very good question. Um, well, having a project is is a great one for a start. So as changes, well as changes, changes too. too yeah. mm. um, also, I'm you know starting to write um, uh, another musical with uh, my collaborator Barbie Younger, who you know we wrote the the songs for the Liver Birds uh, musical, which came out in 2018. Mm. So we're working on that together and. Um, yeah what else have i been doing during lockdown um i mean i haven't been as productive as i would have liked which is a story i've heard echoed from other people when i've been listening right. to the radio it's funny because you know the, the the initial thought was great i've got all this time yeah so i can be super productive and actually what i discovered was getting stuff done became five times as hard mm. and uh um you know almost like you know pushing a boulder uphill right. um so it was you know it's been it's been very challenging so but slight, i have so a slight bit of lef lef lethargy lethargy lef uh, it's motivation it's kind uh, of like in your head wanting to to do stuff but actually getting on and doing it just finding it mm. really difficult and and i think you know that's part of the whole kind of mental mm. the mental health thing yes. has been a huge thing and being able to, you know, have Zoom calls and, and phone calls has been great, but not actually being able to mix and mingle. Yeah. Even in casual situations, you know, people you bump into the shop and, mm. you know, say, oh, you know, talk about the weather and so on. All of those small interactions taken away, I've realized how much of a a social being I am individually. Right. And, uh, you know, I was sort of myself as being somewhat of a loner or being able to do that. You know, often I take myself off when we we're on tour, mm. I'd get up early, go for a walk, look around, take my camera out, you know, not party at the back of the bus after the gigs when we were traveling mm. overnight so much, I'd always be kind of going to bed early to try and get my beauty sleep look <laughs> after my voice, blah, blah, blah. And I've realized that I've been, I don't regret doing that because that was kind of, you know, now I'm 61, it's necessary. It's part of the, if you like, the, the technique of being able to do it. But I'm missing, you know, just even here in a fairly remote area, I could go to the, you know, have a meal with the neighbours or they could come over, I could cook them dinner or go yeah. to the fish restaurant on the other side of the lock and all of that has been unavailable. So that has had a big impact. So. Uh, I've not been as productive as I like, but I have had a few piano ideas knocking at the door, as I said earlier. Uh, there's one in particular, which it just it just won't let me go. So mm. those are the things that have sort of kept me kept me going. OK, excellent. Uh, Matthew Aitken just wanted to know if there's any more uh, new music from Level 42. Not at the moment. No. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I can't give any sort of better news than that. No. I mean, you know, we, we have an intention to write stuff and, you know, we have writ, lit, written a few ideas and sent them to each other, but there's no kind of mm. you know, recording project on the horizon as we speak. OK. And Lee in Australia said, if there was a track, uh, is there a track that you haven't played in ages that you'd love to? Oh, well, uh, is he talking about a level 42 track? Oh, well. I answer answer it is. both both ways, yourself and level, I suppose. Yeah. Well, um, from from my point of view, from a, from the well, from the solo catalogue, if you like, 
you know, there's quite a few of the changes songs which I've never really played live except for those, you know, two gigs I did on the the changes tour <laughs> in 1990. Right. I remember being so upset with our agent at the time that he couldn't get any more gigs, but he basically said, you know, you're not hot, Mike. No one wants to book you. Um, right. Apparently, the apparently the hacienda said no in 1990. Now, really? knowing the history of the hacienda, I'm not surprised. And right. you know, I probably would have gone down a lead balloon in 1990, <laughs> turning up with changes. But right. um, yeah, there's a few. So I mean, I'd love to play Jazar, West Coast Man, um, uh, you know, Pasha with a prop, proper, you know, Batucada section behind mm. me. That would be amazing. Mm. Um, so, and then as far as level 42 songs, well, what, what haven't we played for ages from favorite songs? I mean, we play a lot of my favorite songs. I mean, things like, you know, children say something about you, uh, maybe something like hours by the window. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. as long as, you know, everyone didn't leave to get the beer, uh, that, was, <laughs> that would be a good one to do. Mm -hmm. Uh, what else? Um, coup d'etat, that'd be a good one to do. I think that's a great song and, and could translate itself into a, a good live thing. Yeah, there's a few. Excellent. Uh, Mike, I can't believe how long we've uh, <laughs> chatted, actually. Um, as I, I just want to thank you so much for, for, for doing this, obviously, as a lifelong fan, uh, to be able to have this chat with you. Um, I know, although I won't post this till April the 6th, um, I know we've got your birthday on 17th of the March, so uh, happy birthday uh, in between now and uh, then. And uh, look, thank you so much. I'm sure a lot of fans will not only, the, the question, you know, answering direct questions to, to fans, I think is a wonderful thing. And also to get the background of the album. Uh, very lastly, uh, do you actually still have some available? of because you've done obviously 500 didn't you yeah i mean uh, well um uh, it's they've been they've been kind of flying off the the shelves in these last weeks since um i think paul, paul, paul gave you a shout out the, didn't the, he? yeah, yeah, yeah he I said he it. wanted to yeah. do that and that's had yeah. a, a huge effect right and uh, even my grumpy picture apparently couldn't put people <laughs> off so uh i think there's 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 not very many copies left i would say it's right. probably about you know maybe 10 at the moment something like that Oh, 10. Blimey. Okay. Okay. Right. All right. Well, look, as I said, thank you so much for doing this. Um, I'm, I'm booked for Royal Albert Hall and good old Cliffs Pavilion, which will be about the eighth time I think I've seen you at Cliffs Pavilion. Um, yeah, but I tell you what, this is going to be, well, for me, I think, and for a lot of people, it's going to be an, a, a very special occasion because mm. look at what we took for granted. Yes. You know, we're all going to be turning up at those places that we've all seen each other at and mm. so on. Mm. But we're doing it post this whole pandemic situation. So I, I hope, you know, I'm saying this for myself as well. I hope that we kind of really sort of treasure and and make the most. It has been taken away from us. Unfortunately, we're in the position to do it again. And uh, and it's been a tough time for the, the venue owners. Um, and so I hope that everyone's confident enough to come out and see the shows and enjoy the shows. And I know I'm, it's going to be a really special moment to go back on those stages again. Mm. I think I've realised I might have just pushed the pause button in amongst that bit, but we'll see what happens at the end there. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. <laughs> look, Mike, thank you so much uh, uh, again. And um, yeah, see you in October, I guess. Yeah, see you then. Thank you.